It was all well and good roaming around the high seas, robbing people of their valuables and swaggering about adventuring, but a pirate ship couldn't function without order and structure. At their core, pirates were essentially great sailors because a pirate ship needed the same maintenance and care as any other, especially as it had to catch up to escaping merchant ships whilst being hunted by a fully armed naval vessel. Every crew member had to play their part, from captain to powder monkey. Let's look at the many complicated duties of these rum-swigging rogues. Who's who in a pirate crew? Welcome to Walk the Plank. The Captain. It's wrongly believed that as captain of a pirate ship, I would have ruled over my crew with an iron fist. Many of my men on board have already served on a naval or merchant ship where the command was authoritarian. Discipline was harsh and punishments were brutal. This is why most of them have joined me, to get away from all of the inequality. And on my ship, which is full of thieves and murderers, one man doesn't have any more rights than another. Every one of my men is as important as their crewmate. And unlike conditions on board a navy vessel, they are given roles on the ship not because of their class, but because of their knowledge and ability. I was chosen as captain by a democratic process because of my daring and skill in capturing and plundering, but I know that I could be kicked off the ship at any time if the crew decided they could do better. If that did happen and I was lucky, I might be dropped off at the nearest port, but if I had really cheesed off the men, I could expect to be either thrown overboard or marooned at the nearest uninhabited island. I can only hope that if I lose the goodwill of my men, then I would be like Captain Charles Vane, who was one of the lucky ones. I remember hearing in 1718 he hoisted the Jolly Roger on his Brigantine Ranger when he spotted a large frigate nearby, but the vessel answered by hoisting the French flag and it opened fire. Both of Vane's ships, the Brigantine and the Sloop, were outgunned and he ordered a retreat. The crew accused him of cowardice and voted him out of his captaincy. Out of the 91 men on board, only 15 supported Vane. He was replaced by good old Captain Calico Jack Rackham, but rather than throw Vane overboard, they put him on the sloop with some ammunition, supplies, and his 15 supporters, and let him go. As captain, I am handy with a pistol and skilled in sword fighting. I am expected to make critical decisions in real time, choose which target to engage, which quarry to track, and whether to flee from an enemy or attack. I have the ultimate control of all my crew members during a battle. I like to dress well and sport expensive clothing. I heard that Captain Edward Teach, known as Blackbeard, wears ribbons in his beard. But I would rather a feathered hat, scarlet silks, and a diamond necklace to flaunt my success. But my accomplishments as a captain have also brought down a price on my head. After a good haul, I might get double the loot when compared with my crew members, but if I'm captured by the authorities, I can expect double the punishment. Of course, most pirates face hanging if caught, but for me, it is practically guaranteed. The most infamous among us, like Captain Kidd, had his corpse hung up in chains and left to rot for years as an example to any other aspiring pirate captains like me. They'll have to do more than that to dissuade me. Quartermaster Like my captain, I was elected by a democratic vote. As second in command, I'm primarily tasked with overseeing the efficient conduct of daily operations. The position requires organizational skills, diplomacy, and strong leadership. I have to liaise not only between the captain and crew, but between the crew members themselves to settle any disputes. By assigning jobs to my fellow pirates, I ensure that my captain's orders are followed. But with great responsibility comes great goodies, because as quartermaster, I get second dibs on any plunder that's been won when it's divided among us. Having the most authority after the captain means that I have to lead on board attacks, and when a second ship is captured, I'm the one who decides what loot should be taken, and then sometimes I am made captain of the seized vessel until we dispose of it. As quartermaster, I deal with any matters of discipline, and I will not hesitate to punish any of the crew for minor infractions. Although, to make it fair, serious offences are tried by a jury made up of several crew members. I keep accounts and records of life on the ship to make sure that she is always fully supplied with enough water, food, and of course, copious amounts of rum. Sailing Master Although both the captain and quartermaster have some knowledge of navigation, it's always better to have a dedicated expert like me who has been educated in such matters. Having someone on board who is familiar with coastlines and ocean currents is essential, as there are few charts available and those that we have been able to acquire are incredibly inaccurate. 
Even though I could use a marine chronometer to navigate, they are very expensive instruments, and even then, not completely precise. So I use the night sky as a compass to navigate the ship. Using the stars, I can correctly calculate the ship's position and determine the best course, direction, and speed. Knowing how to read the ocean and quickly reach the exact place where merchant vessels sail or where there are island reefs and dangerous shallows opens up excellent opportunities for us to set up an ambush. As sailing master, I am also tasked with training and organizing the crew members who man the sails. They have to remain calm and disciplined in bad weather and battle conditions, and I have to coach them well. Teaching a group of thieves and murderers and keeping them orderly is a difficult and thankless task, but I have learned to become mindful of their mischiefs, and I don't accept any violations. As a skilled navigator, I know my importance to the success of this ship, but I, like many others on board, am being held against my will. I was abducted from a merchant vessel where I was paid well for my talents, and now I'm forced to carry out this role. Nevertheless, I am well respected on board this ship, and the men often refer to me as the artist, which I suppose is somewhat gratifying. Boatswain or Bossen As Bossen, I have a lot of responsibility, and I am one of the most experienced seamen on board our pirate ship. I answer to the quartermaster and have to keep the ship in good repair by supervising the deckhands. As a young man, I used to work on a Man of War Galleon, a naval ship that escorted merchant vessels and fought against pirates. But after I received a pretty severe flogging when I was whipped with a cat of nine tails, the flesh on my back ripped off. Look, <laughs> nearly killed me. That was just for getting a little pissed and skipping out on roll call. I absconded overboard and swam to shore one night when we were anchored off Jamaica. Soon as I could, I joined a company of pirates who were rolled up in Port Royal, and I began working my way up the ranks with them from a common sailor. As Bossen, I'm in charge of all the activities on the deck, weighing and dropping the anchors, and supervising the crew and maintaining the rigging and sails, either when we're at sea or in the dock. It's important to look after the ropes, wood, and canvas to keep the ship in prime shape for both travel and battle. The deck has to be repeatedly swabbed, and the hull has to be regularly mended. Often take a party of men ashore to restock our supply of materials needed for repairs. I always keep a level head when the ships need to be defended and take charge of the crew. I expect the men to follow my lead, any panic among them during battle won't be tolerated. For me hard work and loyalty, I am always rewarded with an acceptable share and a half of booty. After all, I am a valuable member of the crew, I deserve to be paid my worth and not lose half the skin from me back for some minor rule breaking. Powder Monkey I was about 12 years old when I ran away to join a pirate ship, but despite the regular beatings and empty belly, I wish I was still there now. He said it would be a fine life for any young boy and I would have good clothes and warm bedding and plenty of good food to eat. I was always hungry, so I went willingly. But it turns out these were lies. It's really scary on board the ship when the fighting starts. Me and my mate Will, we have to run about as quickly as we can between the ship's magazine, below deck where the gunpowder is stored, and back up to the cannons. We have to be so careful carrying the powder back up on deck. If I had to take it anywhere near any little spark, then that would be the end of me. There were three of us before, but Tom was killed when he was helping to prepare a cannon. A rogue wave hit the ship and the gunner accidentally loaded it with too much powder. When the cannon was fired, it exploded and the blast burned poor Tom to death. He's only ten. The captain says we were chosen for the job because we're small and quick and unafraid, but really we don't have any choice, it's do or die. I was once so scared that I tried to hide in the hold, but one of the gunners caught me and dragged me out. After the fighting was over, I was given the beating of my life. Even when there's no fighting, we're expected to work everywhere on the ship. Guns need polishing, cooking to be done in the galley, decks need swabbing, all that and we hardly get any share of the spoils, even from a big haul. <laughs> I'm gonna run away as soon as I can. I don't want to die on this stinking ship like poor Tom. Outro During the golden age of piracy, crews in the Caribbean were made up of all nationalities. Captains would have no problem picking up recruits in places like Providence Island, Tortuga Island, and Jamaica. The places were teeming with would-be recruits, many were from Britain or the American colonies. Some black African slaves were captured and forced into the life, whilst others who had escaped from plantations joined it willingly. But with next to no knowledge of seamanship, they were usually employed as servants, although there are some records of some working up the ranks to become equal crew members. Being a young man and being handy with a weapon gave any pirate an advantage. Life at sea was dangerous and hard, and any pirate over the age of 40 was rare. 
The average career span for a pirate was only around two years, but for most it was worth the risk. Better pay, better food, liberal amounts of alcohol, and a sense of freedom and adventure outweighed the very real risks of injury, imprisonment, or death by hanging. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank, bit of a different format this time, so let us know in the comments down below if you want to see more like this, or if you want me to stay far away from doing accents. Please subscribe if you enjoy these videos, and I'll see you next week for another one. Cheers!